like it or not. You're right. Now, I've been doing this thing with all these perfusion palettes. It's time for banging pinks. Yes, I'm showing you the palette, even though it's in black and white. So there, you manage. Anyway, I have now gone through all of these little eight pan profusion palettes. I love them. I'm hoping, even though they say limited edition, I'm really hoping that if enough people go chasing over there to get those five dollar palettes, that they'll keep them. Every time I do something with them, I, I like go, hey, profusion, keep them. They're incredible. We need these. Anyway, I had fun doing this. Let's see if you have fun watching. Oh, warning. This one's very chatty. It's not going to be a little short thing. It's not going to be speed it up or any of that stuff. You've been warned. I know, as I should have said in the intro, I hope I did, I have to remember. Anyway, this is the last of the little Profusion 8 pans. This is Banging Pinks. And I'm going to mix this up just a little bit. I'm going to be chatty this time, which I should have also mentioned in the intro, if I remembered to do that. I can't always predict what's going to be in the intro since I film it after so that you can see my glorious look in black and white so now of course because I've decided to try to do this one of the dogs has decided he needs to make a ruckus I'll be back alrighty ruckus fixed now my dogs and my whole house right now is just kind of all in a ruckus, no matter where you look. It's like the kids are tired of being pretty much stuck. I mean, we've got a small backyard they can play in. Okay, this is a new piece. This is the Elf Putty Eye Primer. And I got it in white. I think it's got one other color. But I figured I'd give it a try to see how different it is from the white concealer I've been using from AOA. And it definitely goes on less thick. But if I understand correctly what Angie from 4F Beauty is saying about her crow and pebble, this is similar. Because it goes to a usable base pretty quick. And with the AOA Studio stuff, I have to kind of wait for it to finish drying down. And this is like get it spread out with the brush a little bit. Get the lid back on it. Lay it down and get the excess off the fingers. It's dry. Anyway. Yes, this is what my face currently looks like with all kinds of little breakout spots. But I'm having a flare with my delightful autoimmune issue. Anyway, there's the palette. And luckily, for those of you who like to know what it is I've worked with, there are actually names on these palette shades, which I think is just a lovely concept. 
for some reason some of the other companies don't always put the shade names so that I can like tell you. Anyway, we have Innocent and Smooch and Adore and Proposal and then we've got Ballet and Laser Marvel and Heartbreaker. Now, I am a real fan of Profusion. They've got some great stuff. The Every time I've picked up a Profusion palette, I have not been disappointed. And that's including some of the stuff that they put out for holidays. Some of their holiday palettes are gorgeous, and they're no different in the formula. This little palette and its three little friends are five bucks. Now, unfortunately, they're listed as limited edition. I keep hoping that if enough people are interested in them, they will change their mind about limited edition because these are absolutely stunning. And they need to be in your repertoire. You know, you've got all those other companies making those color-specific pieces. And, you know, for five bucks, you can have four colors with only one pan different. I mean, this is an eight instead of a nine. That's okay. I can work with that. And there's no pressed glitter in any of this. There are shimmers. There are mattes. But no chunky pressed glitter in any of them. I'm starting off with Innocent. Because I'm not. <laughs> Haven't been for a long time. And take that as you will. because I have done some foolish things over my time. <clears throat> some of which did not end in the best light, but The only time I've been on the wrong side of the bars in, in a police station was in a holding. Never did any time. Paid a few fines. Got lectured by the judge and then my dad. But nothing that required time. Thank God. <laughs> anyway. Alright, that seems to be a good start. Now where do I want to go? Let's see. Smooch and Marvel seem to be closer to satins than to actual shimmers. The ballet is the only real shimmer in here. So I'm going to take Marvel. Same brush. And I'm going to start out here on this outer corner.
can start working in just a little bit. Looks to me like Marble has decided it wants to be a little persnickety. So I'm just going to use my little depotting tool and scrape it just a little bit because sometimes with the uh, satins and with the barely shimmers you can get kind of almost like a little crust on top and I think it's where some of the um, pressing material makes it all stick together kind of gets set on top. I've run into that with a few mats too. It just kind of gloms together on top and then doesn't want to come off just with a brush to let you through. So, anyway, yep. We're still doing shut-in. We're still doing maskuses. Some of the people in my little rural town on the backside of beyond in southeastern Oregon are being a little tetchy about people who are doing things like wearing their masks and such. And it's like, look, if you don't want to wear it, feel free. Just keep your distance from me. I have health issues that would make it really, really bad for me to get a dose of virus. So, and they're like being all up in the air about it here, even though our little corner of Oregon is just now on the upswing with the number of cases. So, I will just do my thing, wear my mask, and tell the rest of them where they can get off if they want to give me grief about me wearing the mask. It's like it's my life, it's my choice. You know, that freedom of choice you guys are bitching about? Pardon my French. It's like my choice is to wear the bleeding mask. Want you want me to make you one? We make pretty ones. Now I'm gonna try the smooch. And it's already having that same problem of not wanting to come off of the palette. Easy and I love my depotting tool. Now this is not that much difference than the Marvel. It is lighter and I'm doing kind of a trying to do kind of a graduated thing going towards the inner corner. Figured I'd try something different. I mean did a halo eye with the blue sort of it was hard to see my imaging is not perfect I'm still working with it's a pretty good webcam but I'm still working with just a webcam so if you've noticed my lighting has changed if you go over to Instagram you'll see why and this is all DIY guys We did a mock-up of what I call bounce box. I don't know if that's the technical term or what. No, it's not a soft box. It takes the light source, focuses it, focuses it away from you, 
and does a bounce back off of a reflective surface. Now we did the first one with some basic cardboard from a box that we cut up and some white, plain white printing paper. That thing was scotch taped together. And then some wire clothespins were used to attach it to my little ring light. I have a little $15 clamp it on the table, tiny ring light with that's got a little clamp that'll either hold your cell phone or I can rest the web camera on it like you would normally do on the top of your monitor. And, you know, picked it up cheap. 15 bucks. Let's roll. I've got a little rag down here. See? That I use to clean my brushes off just a little bit. Because... Because... It's like, yes, I started off with the ponytail holder um, color switch thing. Started off that way. However, I did indeed notice that even with my synthetic brushes, they were getting a little ragged. So, rag it is. Now, this is one of my little crocheted face thing it's that I do so I just put one in here and go for it okay now I'm going to take just a teeny bit of one of my glitter glues I have a bunch of different ones this one happens to be the Hyundaian. Yes, I got it off of AliExpress. Yes, it was inexpensive. I paid $2 for two tubes. Yes, I use it a lot. And set that down, slip the cap back on with one twist, pick up another flat brush, la 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 la. And I'm going to pick up the ballet pink, which is a shimmer, the only obvious shimmer in the palette. And I'm even going to give this puppy a little spritz with my homemade spritzer. Yes, even the fluid in it is homemade. It's water, glycerin, and a little bit of toner. And believe it or not, that's all setting spray is for the main components. Some of them have a little alcohol so that they dry faster. Some of them actually smell a little bit like hairspray. So you gotta kind of wonder. Now, it wouldn't bother me if it actually had hairspray in it because, you see, before people started doing these setting sprays, if you were in theater or especially in clowning, you would use hairspray to keep your makeup from moving. Don't look at me like that. I'm not kidding. I've worked at the edges of theater for years. When I was in high school, I was in lighting sunlight. I was the person who flipped the switches. I didn't set the lights. 
I didn't design the lights. I flipped the switches. I had a script in front of me that said, flip this now. And that's what I did. I flipped it when the script said. And the reason I did that was because I had the ability to follow directions without having to reread every two seconds to make sure I was in the right place at the right time. Some of the other people that were doing the other stuff had aptitudes in electricity, had aptitudes in color theory, well beyond mine. And even though it was a high school production, well, the other thing I helped with was hammer and nails and set. But if you put me out in front of an audience, I am not going to remember the first bloody line. So, I did lights. Locked myself in the light cage, not let anybody in once I had my stuff set. And it's like, mm, stay out, get touch my stuff, I bite you. Which is why I had no idea what I was doing with a lighting. And then I need to put the stuff, put the glue on this side. Now, the little cardboard setup that we did with the lights worked well enough, looked good enough, that we decided to do something a little more sturdy. A little more stable. And I had this elf delivery recently. And the elf delivery, the box, is already basically a clay white surface on the interior. So I went, okay, let's start with the white box. And my husband looked at me and said, cool, what are we going to use for supports? He said, we need something that's going to be more rigid. So I took myself over to Dollar Tree, called myself doing something, took my silly self over to Dollar Tree and picked up three sheets of the flat white, not the shining white, but the flat white covered foam board. The shining white's a bit more of a, it looks good when you're making signs and stuff but it's a pain in the tuchus if you're trying to build something the glue doesn't like to stick as well so i came back with the three sheets of foam board and his designing little engineering looking heart sweetly came over and started designing my stand to put this thing on and we use some more printing paper to kind of fill in any of the gaps in the box and that kind of thing. So now I have this elf box on a rather sturdy foam core DIY, foam core and hot glue DIY stand in front of me. Again, with my same little inexpensive light, my little ring light, faced into the box so that the, the white surface is bouncing light back on me. Now if I get uppity, I've got a profusion box that's all black. I can always get some of the black foam core to finish up the edges and stuff. And then get some aluminum or, you know, aluminum foil or take apart a one of the car windscreen covers to do the rest of the bits and pieces and get a little lamp socket and all that and some fabric and do a soft box. I don't see me doing that anytime soon. It's a little more complex 
and I'm I'm doing pretty well with the bounce light currently, so I'm not going to push it. Alrighty, that looks pretty good. We will see where we go from here. Because now I need to put my primer on and then put some face up. Well, technically I should put my eyebrows on before I do the, the foundation, but I'm going to put my primer on. This is the Elf Luminous Putty Primer. Yes, I'm doing a lot of elf putty lately. And I got this big fat brush. This is a El Cheapo big fat brush. And I just kind of take this all over the place. I don't get too close to the eyes. Because that's going to get a lot of stuff anyway. And that means I'm not also, also not picking up the scatter that I'm going to need to clean up just kind of smear it around. It's very, very, very nice. I like it. It's kind of cooling when you first put it on. It only, it's like, yeah, I keep going back every so often, but I'm just going tap, tap on top of this putty cake. And that's plenty. And then some. Yes, I know. I'm being silly. But at this point, if I'm not allowed to be silly, just like, I best not even be anywhere. My last class, which was on advanced fiction writing, I came out with a solid A. 1,000 points out of 1,000 possible points. This next class that I'm in, for those of you who don't no, and haven't been following me for any real length of time. I'm in college, finally. And I'm in creative writing, English, focus on fiction through the Southern New, Ham New Hampshire University online. doing pretty well and partially it's because my parents always said that I'd never go to college and partially it's because I love to write I've always loved to write I've been writing for as long as I knew what paper and pencil did telling stories and I figured maybe I could go to college for a little while. No, I'm not stopping. I'm going after the BA. I'm even considering masters. And do it in creative writing so that maybe I can clean my stories up enough to be acceptable to work as a working writer. Now, I know there's a lot of people who have never been to college and do amazing writing. I wanted to go to college. For one thing, with that piece of, of birdcage lining hanging on the wall, I can ask for a few more bucks if I'm tutoring. If I want to do something like work at the local community college as an English instructor, I need the masters, preferably. 
but tutoring somebody in English, it's like it's nice to have some paperwork that shows you actually know what you're doing. Um, tutoring somebody in English, possibly teaching creative writing. Yes, I'm an old fart with health issues, but if I'm talking about maybe one class a week, maybe, I don't see it quite as much of a problem. If I can do it online, even better. But, my main thing is my family, pretty much all of them, told me I would never make it in college, and I was never going, so I didn't need to worry about it, and I'm going, okay, and me, being me, oh yeah, this is one of those little six for a dollar baby washcloths you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. And just a tad of my cellar water. Pick up some of this excess out here. It's a little bit farther out than I wanted it. Also picks up some of that where it gets down here on the on the cheeks from the excess now if this thing dries out too much to use while I'm doing this stuff I've got this whole bottle of my cellar water I can just dampen another spot sweet enough to go and pick this up for me. I have been wanting to try the $5 makeup line they have at Dollar General. Dollar General does not exist in my area. I did a search for like 200 miles. There is no Dollar General. Riri, who lives all the way over in North Carolina, has a Dollar General, as she said, within walking distance. So she went down to the Dollar General and picked this up for me. And then shipped it all the way out here to Oregon. And this is the Believe Beauty Skin Finish Foundation. Medium to full coverage. I picked up Warm Vanilla. Now, in the bottle, this does not look a lot like my color. But, that's okay because once I put it on it looks a little funky when I go to start putting it on too however once it dries down instead of going darker it's pretty much what my skin color is by the time we get a little farther into summer because I do tan up a bit even with lots and lots of sunscreen on. It's like the sunscreen is not going to prevent all tanning. It's just supposed to prevent enough sun damage so that you're not burnt and you're not collecting lots and lots of the free radicals that damage your skin but if you're out in the sun even with sunscreen you are going to color up a little bit and I've got plenty of stuff already that is in now I'm going to leave Riri's channel down in 
my description box. Thank you, sweetie. And, but, you know, I'm going, I've got plenty, plenty of foundation in my dead of winter color. I've got a couple of them that are like slight variations. So I've got like fall and then dead of winter where I look like uncooked chicken and that kind of thing. I do not tan well, but I do tan. Uh, before sunscreen, where it was just suntan lotion, I would burn, peel, and then burn again. Thank you to the Scots and the Irish in my family line. Now my family line is Scott, Irish, Welsh, two different Native American tribes, but not enough that anybody wants to claim me. Um, And just a smidgen of the one thing that the Scots and the Irish actually agree on, which is the English. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't end up coming from the Isles and not have a little bit of everybody from the Isles hiding in there. But most of the people from the Isles have a tendency to be kind of pale. So, yeah, the native blood is not significant enough to hit the top of the list and protect my skin better. And one of my native family members was also... one of the tribes that, that got themselves involved with other than all them white children running around trying to grab up the exotic natives. So in my mom's family, we have a fairly large African-American bloodline depending on which portion of the family you're talking about, we get some of them that are quite a bit darker and some of us that are quite a bit lighter. And then I've got, I've got one cousin in North Carolina that depending on how long he's been out in the sun, he changes significant melanin levels. So, the African-American blood isn't far enough up to help my skin either. Other than, that's probably part of the reason I have some rather intense yellow undertone going on. When I was working at a theater supply, where Jim used to work. We worked and worked and worked trying to find a base, even in the theatrical line, that worked on me because most of the, the regular cosmetics were just way too pink. And what, they, what we ended up doing is I, depending on the time of year, I ran between Japanese and Chinese to be able to get the yellow content right. I'm a mess. Anyway, there's my foundation. 
uh, it's got a really nice coverage. It's got a really nice feel to it. It's Maybelline. But no, I don't make any specific claims about my ethnicity. I did not grow up knowing anything special. For one thing, where I grew up, my parents were from North and South Carolina. And they just didn't talk about it. I found out a lot of stuff later. Excuse me. And they all acted like they were shocked. And I'm going, hmm. Right. You can't fool me. I know about them. You are not shocked. You're just shocked I found out. I mean, they were from the South. I was raised in Virginia. Born and raised in Virginia. And I managed to finally find out the difference between what they were teaching us in school for history and what history really was. which spawned a few arguments at home. Because they was both serious case of breadneck. And we disagreed a lot. A lot. Now, I am one of those types that has attempted to at least be reasonable with other people. I am no screaming or marching civil rights person, but I do vote that direction. I am not claiming any kinship in particular but I do on occasion when the opportunity arises attempt to leverage my privilege against the BS that happens not always successful but I do at least attempt Okay, I'm going to put my first layer of mascara on, get that started so it's got a chance to dry. So if anybody wants to at me about this particular part of my 
rambling. Go ahead. But, if you wouldn't mind taking it to Instagram in a PM so we don't have a shouting you know what storm in the comments here I'd be appreciative but if you just need to vent your spleen come right on over to Instagram and go for it by the way Instagram is where all the pictures of my light box are Got that part done, got a line on, got the part. So now, time to go to the rest of this stuff. Now I got in one of the Ipsy bags, this is the Wander Costa del Rey bronzer. And it's got a little shimmer to it. I re really prefer my bronzers and such not to have a lot of shiny in it because it's like I don't want to look like I'm covered in suntan oil for one thing because I don't do that another reason I try and stay out of the sun more haha, is because my autoimmune issues are UV reactive which means it can get worse and I will feel sicker if I'm out in the sun and out in the sun too long so yeah I put some makeup on to make it look like I've been out in the sun a little but that is not reality Now I've got, I've got a bunch of, let's see, which one's that? That's not what I'm looking for yet. Got my little elf compact. Now technically this one's a bronzer and a blush, but hey. I love me my elf. Elf is my friend. This one is called Santa Lucia. more than likely trying to reference the region for the shades. Whee! Yeah, put a little of this up here, so yeah. Somebody's going to look at me and go, get out of the sun. Actually doesn't take that long for that kind of set thing to happen if I'm out in the Sun more than about five minutes my face goes beet red like those people who flush when they've had alcohol and just beet red people go, are you okay <sighs> yeah I'm just fine it's just being out in the Sun now we have I've got a uh, Shanab Miami that's got, I've got Guava Glow, which is this pink. 
I got a, these are all Ipsy things. I got Wander Beauty After Hours, which has got a, a champagne with a pink kind of undertone. And then I've got a K Voss Fairy Dust in Moonlight, which is another kind of a champagne, but a lot more pink. I'm going, all right, which one am I using? Which one am I using? I pulled out all three because I was going, all right, let's see what this looks like, and then I'll figure it out. I think I'm going with the K-Voss. Mainly because there are a lot of people who, you know, call highlighters, fairy farts, at least on YouTube that I've heard. Some of my, some of the other influencers and such that I like to follow, one of them calls them fairy farts all the time. Hi, Soraya. No, she don't know me from Adam's house cat, okay? But I watch her stuff, I comment, and yeah, a lot of the stuff I pick up from other influencers, I'm going to go, yeah, okay. That's where I got it. Put that right there, and a little of this down here. Shiny, 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 shiny. I've actually gotten to a point with my with my Ipsy that I've got tons, and I mean tons, of these little sample things. I've got a year and a half worth of these little sample things. So, I have taken the plunge and gone up one level on the Ipsy because I'd like to see what I would get if I had one level up. We'll see how it goes as to whether or not I keep that level. Because if it doesn't look worth to me, I'll go back to my little bag. Because it's like the next level is basically double the first level. Now, I have no idea which of the pinks I've got laying here in front of me I'm going to put on my mouth. But I've got this really pale pink lip pencil. Yes. I'm using a lip pencil. Don't be afraid. See? Pink. I'm using the lip pencil, and that's all it's called, it's pink. This is one of the Santee Super Gel Intense Lip Liner in pink. I'm doing this in the hopes not thinking there's going to be that much hope, but in the hopes that heaven help me, it stops some of the bleeding from the edges. Finish this up. This is a Maybelline Master Precise Skinny Eyeliner Pencil. I use it a lot for this waterline stuff because it's so tiny.
Now, when I picked this up at the drugstore, they only had dark brown. They didn't have a black. So, and it just so happens that the elf liner I just put on is called coffee. It's a brown, not a black. Why am I doing this now? Because it gives me a few minutes to look down at the pinks and figure out which one I'm going to wear. I didn't want to just go, okay, where's my nude lip? Because a lot of times with my nude lip, I end up with a pinky nude anyway, or you can't see my mouth at all. Okay, this stuff is from a company called Fawera. Fawera. And yes, I got it off of AliExpress like a buck. Took a while to get here. Didn't care. I figured I'd wait. It'll get here when it gets here. But as much as I appreciate the Stila that I got in one of the Ipsy bags and a Stila that I got in a friend box from Miss Pink Sweets Miss Anya, I'm not going to cough up that money for a little glitter to stick in the corner of my eye. I'm not doing it. This was a dollar for the stuff and a dollar for the shipping. I'm good with that. The other thing is, I have seen plenty of people in the UK who are using Fawera stuff that they're picking up at inexpensive locations in the UK. So I'm going, okay, it's not just trash. It's like where Wet n Wild originally started with their being the cheap seats. Let's see. I've got this one. I've got this one, yes, I have a pink frost. And by the way, that's what it's called, pink frosted. It's an LA Colors. This one's Elf. This one is Diamond Lip Gloss from AOA Studios. It's The name of it is Hard Candy. I've got this one which is bold pink, which is another elf. I've got this one, which is from Amuse. It's called Darling. I'm thinking it's going to be this one because it looks pretty much like something that would go with the eye look. Yes, it's a baby pink. Okie dokie. This is it. Now, if anybody wants to cuss me out about the... Uh, choice of lip color. Go ahead. I could probably use a darker lip. But I'm looking at this pink eye and just going, that's pretty. 
that's the last of the um, new perfusions that I haven't touched yet that's now been touched. <coughs> I do have another couple of perfusions up here I need to stick my my brushes in and then I've got my C colors that I need to stick the brushes in. I've got one on Instagram where it's just me and my mask going out for errands. This is the C color. It's called Glamour. There's the colors. Now, C color is known for doing things that people might consider duplicates of some high end stuff. So I put my brush in Glamour. This is the next C color I'm doing, and this should be the next film. This one, it's all shiny on the outside. It's called Feverish. If anybody recognizes the color story, let me know. And then I've got this one over here. It's called Whimsical. Again, if you recognize the color story, let me know. In any case, this has rambled on quite long enough, and then some. I'll probably have to trim some out, just because, you know, I'm going to take this other wolf pink, in the bold, just kind of juice it up a little as we have bold pink and the original one I put on is wild rose now what do you think anyway according to the timer on the clock I've been at this an hour and almost 15 minutes so yeah I'm gonna have to trim some stuff anyway Tell me what you think. Dare you. Be good. <laughs>